HD Zero has gained a cult following being a low latency digital FPV system. But when compared to other systems, there's one thing holding it back, and that's image quality. So when Carl asked if I wanted to try HD Zero's new high resolution camera, I just had to give it a go. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my experience flying HD Zero's new high resolution camera, who and what build is it suitable for, and how does it compare to both DJI and Walksnail in terms of image quality and overall performance. But first, let me share with you what this new camera brings to the table, especially when compared to previous HD Zero cameras. The HD Zero Micro V3 delivers a high resolution mode through its half inch image sensor with a native resolution of 1080p at 30 frames per second. But when you use it in standard resolution mode, you do get better anti-aliasing, less noise and better image quality compared to the previous version because it's oversampled from the 1080p image down to 720p at 60 frames per second. So the quality of the Micro V3 is going to be better than any other HD Zero camera. However, that's not all. To reduce vignetting, improve dust resistance, provide a sharper image, as well as better low light performance, and remove that annoying fish eye effect, which was prominent on the V2 when using 1080p, the Micro V3 comes with a brand new and larger lens. Although there is something missing from the V3. And that's the inclusion of being able to fly at 540p at 90 frames a second. So let's see what it's actually like to fly it. Although we do need to get it on a build first. And that may have you wondering, what frames is the Micro V3 compatible with and what kind of flying are the different modes suitable for? Well, HD Zero is known for its prominence in racing, but pilots who are wanting to use it for freestyle or long range might feel like they've been left out. The Freestyle V2 VTX did help close that gap, except image quality has still been the missing piece of the puzzle. With a Micro V3 camera, if you're planning anything between a three to five inch build, you shouldn't have any issues. Just make sure the frame can take a 19 millimeter camera. For my build, I went with the Quadmula Siren F3, and I found that there is a high risk of breaking the lens in a crash, because the new longer lens does stick out quite a bit. But on a five inch build where you're gonna have a lot more room, you shouldn't have this issue because you're gonna get more protection from the frame. If you wanted to do a whoop or a smaller build, then the new Nano V3 camera is gonna be your best bet. And for racing, of course, you should stick with the Nano 90. That being said, you might be wondering what the Micro V3 is actually like to use. Well, I first tried the Micro V3 in its standard resolution mode. And while it looked great for HD Zero, I didn't really notice any significant improvement in image quality. Therefore, the oversampled 720p mode didn't really make that much of a difference to me. So it was time to switch it into 1080p mode. But what I found is there was some kind of issue in the goggles where the video feed just didn't feel as smooth as it should have been, as if it was dropping frames. Except when watching back the 1080p footage in the DVR and on the computer, it was actually quite smooth. After going into the HD Zero Discord to look into this further, I discovered it's actually a bug that affects some of the V3 cameras. And what is happening is the code that's designed to prevent things like image jitter, rolling and tearing is too strict and it's skipping a frame. So it needs to be modified to allow for more marginal variance in the V3 cameras. And you might have seen some other channels reporting increased latency. Well, it's not really increased latency, it's just a bug that needs to be fixed in a future firmware update for the goggles. But that doesn't mean it was a complete failure because the higher resolution did make a real difference to the overall image quality when compared to previous versions. And before we compare HD Zero to DJI and Walks now, let me share with you the main difference in how each of the systems work as this is gonna paint a clearer picture. Well, no pun intended. And it also will explain why they perform differently. So imagine you're having a conversation with someone and you don't exactly hear what they said. So you ask them to repeat it. Then they say it again. And while it takes a little longer to understand the message, you do get it loud and clear. But what if you didn't have the ability to ask them to repeat themselves? 
but just had to deal with the information you got first time. Not to mention, they've now just barked out more and more information and more and more again. Well, you just have to forget the old information, process it, and move on with the new information. And that's exactly how HD0 works. It's a one-way system, from the video transmitter to the goggles. Whilst DJI and Walks now can actually ask the VTX to repeat itself, albeit that does come at the expense of latency because they're two-way systems. Now, there are also a few more differences around image processing and transmission and all of that technical stuff about how they work. But the key difference is retransmission, and that's why with HD0, you see breakup, while on DJI and Walks Now, you get either more latency or a blocky image. So how does the Micro V3 compare to DJI and Walks Now? Well, let's take a look at the different setups I'm gonna use for this comparison. For DJI, I'm gonna be using an O3 Air unit with the stock antenna. And on my Goggles V2, I'm using the Flyfish RC Osprey patch. On Walks Now, I've got the Goggles X with the stock antennas, and a Rush Cherry V2 on the quad. For HD0, I'm gonna be using the stock antenna that comes with the Freestyle V2. And for the goggles, I've got TrueRC Stubbies with a pair of TrueRC X2 Air Mark IIs. But this isn't designed to be a perfect comparison or a super robust scientific test where all the gear and the conditions are exactly the same across each setup. Rather, this is simply how I fly each of these different setups when I'm out flying. And it's a quick flight test just to see what they're like. So let's start with Walks Now, which I was actually quite impressed with the image quality for Walks Now. Now for DJI O3, and as you'd expect, it is going to do pretty well in this test. This is HD0 in 1080p mode. But how do they compare side by side? and I'm gonna line up the video's timing in three different stages. Stage one is flying to the tree, stage two is behind the tree, and stage three is gonna be behind the second tree. When looking at them side by side, you can see that HD0 is a completely different kind of system to the others, while Snell and DJI are very close. And it reminds me of comparing a car specifically built for the track, whether that's a circuit race or drifting. It's not about saying it's just a racing system, but, DJI and Walksnell are more like a normal car you get at a dealership. And sure, if you want to buy a car from a dealership where your FPV system is more like a consumer product, then HD0 is not for you. But you aren't going to get that locked in feeling which the fixed and super low latency can give you. Therefore, if you want a digital FPV system that has the best image quality for the lowest latency, now keywords here, not best image quality outright, but best image quality for the lowest latency, where you get the most locked in feeling, DJI and Walksnell are just not for you. And sure, they might feel locked in, but once you've flown HD0 and really experienced that true locked in feeling, you're not gonna ever feel the same on DJI and Walksnell. So if you wanna get that feeling, you're gonna need the Micro V3, and you're gonna need to get the Freestyle VTX V2, because the original Freestyle VTX just doesn't fit on any builds. So watch this video here to see what that's like. I'm Darren Allen. Until next time, don't forget to send it.